Hi, we are live again on Reading with Joan. Uh, once again, uh, I am Joan and Jemima and my co-hosts. And we've been on this journey of reading every week or every day with the kids. And uh, we have now started working with um, talking about topics we learned from the book um, in our daily life. And currently we've been discussing uh, Hurricane Betsy and uh, conflicts and relationships at home. And uh, we've been able to read and um, talk about um, conflict resolution. And what's the next one? negotiation negotiation i think um was um uh, last week what was the thing we discussed can you remember sorry sorry can you remember why we discussed sorry why did we discuss sorry yeah why did we discuss sorry because papers master sarah Mistrust and she ran away. They were both supposed to say sorry to each other. Okay, so Hagar ran away from her master. We're talking about a story last week about a lady called Hagar or a servant girl called Hagar that ran away from her master because she's done something wrong. And when she ran away, uh, a big angel appeared to um to her to go back and say sorry for what she's done and so we were talking to kids um about the importance of learning to say sorry and um, why it is important for us to say sorry when we've done something wrong and we how did we conclude yesterday can you remember at uh, last week <clears throat> well, we concluded by um you need to speak loud so they can hear you um it was. Uh, Can't remember. Yeah. But I do know that we are talking about saying sorry and like forgiving as well. Yeah. So we concluded last week by saying that there are certain times, just a few times oh, yeah. in our lives, what happens then? That sorry doesn't change everything, and that's what we're talking about today. Sorry doesn't change everything, and so we now said, okay. We'll go and think about it, kids, and then we'll say, okay, what what situation do we have that sorry doesn't change everything? I know it is obvious that it is important that when we say sorry, we should learn to accept, or the other party should learn to accept sorry when we've gotten to a point of uh, dealing with the conflict. But when sorry doesn't change everything, what happens? Okay, Jeremy, do you have a point you want to talk about? Yeah, so on Thursday, I think. Yeah. Okay. Thursday. Um there was <clears throat> um like webinar. Mm -hmm. My mum needed to go and do something, so and she was recording it, so she wanted us to like keep watching and rec record it. <clears throat> mm -hmm. <coughs> sorry. Okay. And then we were watching some videos and me and Jed put the laptop too close to the mic. So the video was all that you could hear instead of the webinar. And when I said sorry, it didn't bring the recording back. Oh, when you said sorry, you didn't bring the recording back. Kids, do you have, at home, kids at home, do you understand what she was trying to say? Do you understand what she was trying to say? So I gave her an assignment and I said, uh, make sure when this recording is finished, put it off because I'm listening to something and I'm recording it. So I went out, went to do some shopping. And by the time I came back, Jeremy and Jed have brought their own laptop close to my recording and completely distorted my recording. And all I was hearing was, what was I hearing? Our video. Your video. So. Our recording overshadowed mine, and then afterwards, what did you say? Um, sorry, but <laughs> it didn't solve everything. <clears throat> it didn't make the lap 
laptop sound go away. It didn't make the laptop sound go away. It didn't make the... no editing. And there was no editing available for me to be able to separate my the voice of my recording and the voice of whatever they were listening to on the laptop. So in that, in that situation, were you able to say sorry? Did you say sorry? Yes. Did I accept the sorry? Yes. But it did take, did it make everything better? No. No. So sometimes kids, what is the lesson you learned there? That sorry doesn't change everything. But that doesn't mean that you shouldn't say sorry at all. That doesn't mean you shouldn't say sorry, but sorry doesn't change everything. That's number one. Number two, what else? We realize that when we say sorry, the other party is important. What what do we expect the other party to do? Okay. Forgive. Ah, that's a very important statement. Chibuma, what do you understand by forgive? Uh, I understand that if, like, if someone does something wrong and you feel angry, just give them another chance when you give someone another chance okay so forgive is when you give someone another chance so when you say sorry even when you can't get the things back you the other party will try to forgive so jed um in that situation what did mommy do did mommy forgive you and jemmy mm -hmm. but was mommy upset yeah mommy was upset and what mommy forgive was she was upset and so kids is important as brothers and sisters we'll get upset with each other and yes we'll get upset with each other but what do we do we forgive we forgive and sometimes forgiveness can also be very difficult yes or no yeah. <clears throat> yes forgiveness can be difficult and so when forgiveness is difficult what do we do we still forgive sometimes we we but sometimes you don't. Yeah, sometimes we we still forgive and um, and um, yes, sometimes we don't forgive. So what happens when we don't forgive? Mm. You you have like a grudge against the person who yeah. you needed to forgive. Chuma, do you know what grudge means? No. It means like you have like you don't like the other person yeah so forgive for what they did forgive means you don't like the other person for what they've done and then you're upset with them right yeah. you're upset with them and then you you take it against them um how does that make you feel when you are upset with someone else does that make you feel better no, it doesn't make you feel better, right? Mm. It doesn't make you feel better, but do you still continue to do it and get upset and um, and uh, continue in that way? Mm. Huh? Do you? Mm. So, okay, now, Jeremy, if you, if you cannot forgive somebody, how does it make you feel? Mm. Just upset upset you you lose your peace right oh yeah and you can't like really talk with the person uh -huh. you can't like socialize uh -huh. which means like up basically uh -huh. um, and it's hard to be friends with them again. so in the context of a house what happens when you don't forgive jemmy jed mm. you get upset with each other you get upset with each other and jed what happens when you can't forgive jemmy mm. I normally try not to be sisters. You try not to be sisters. <laughs> is, is, it, is it possible for you not to be sisters? Uh, so now in the context of home children, it is important that we disagree. We always disagree because it's not possible for the tongue and even the tongue and the teeth, they still bite. Yak, you see, when the teeth bite you, how do you feel when the teeth bite you? So, so we now say you don't want to stay inside the teeth anymore. The teeth don't want to stay. 
Uh, the teeth don't stay in the tongue, or the tongue don't stay in the teeth. In the teeth? Yeah. <laughs> oh. Oh, what? On top or under? On oh, top or under the teeth. So now, we'll have a recap. We started with conflict resolution. And after we discussed conflict resolution, we talked about negotiation, bringing yourself and talking about how the way you feel. And most importantly, one group does not um, say I won over the other. So everybody leave uh, in a peaceful way. And the third point was talking about sorry and how we manage, why we should say sorry to each other, whether we are the hurting party or we are the on hurting party <laughs> because sorry takes a lot of pain away and then we talked about situations where sorry does not take all the pain away or does not solve everything and we had an example of destroying my recording and we've had several examples Jamie, another example when we broke the tv and you said sorry. Did the sorry to bring the TV back? No. 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 Mine it wasn't as good. It's when I broke the laptop and you said sorry, I told the truth and it became better. Yeah, you told the truth, you became better, but that doesn't that didn't take everything away, right? You didn't. It didn't bring anything everything back. And it didn't bring the laptop back into normal, is it? No, it didn't. So even though we got like something else, it's you still spend more. Yes, that means that so sorry sometimes help you to spend more money. But at <laughs> the long run, create a habit of saying sorry. What other things did we say we're going to uh, discuss and um, talk about? Mm -hmm. Jeremy, what other that topic? Can you remember? Mm -hmm. Thank you. So we also said we're going to talk about thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, are you? Mm -hmm. Ayo? The most fascinating Ayo. What is thank you? Well, I mean, when you have to shake something, you know, you uh, can so, to show that you're at the table, so if you want to say it's so, it's a safety don't lie. Okay, okay, so when you appreciate something, you say thank you, right? Yeah, so, so when you appreciate something or someone, you say thank you, and if you don't, if you don't say thank you, how does the person feel? Like I'm yeah. grateful. You're ungrateful. So today, Jeremy, can you give us an example of a time you said thank you for something that anybody did for you, not mommy or whatever? Mm. Oh, when the people gave you the gift. The Saturday. No, on your birthday. My birthday. On oh, yeah. Saturday, when you went Saturday, that wasn't my birthday. Oh, well, you know, on my birthday, she okay. gave me presents and I said thank you. So, your birthday, people gave you presents and you said thank you. Today, you let me have juice. And I think I said, I think I said thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I think I did. Did you hear that? I let her have juice today and she thinks she's, and she said thank you, right? Oh, I said. Thank you, wish. And when mom, when mommy gave me a little bit of Jenny's box. Jed, do you like saying thank you? Mm -hmm. You sure? But I just don't say a lot. You don't say it a lot, so you need to be reminded yeah, every time to say correct. thank you. No, I just say it correct. Okay. So, yes. Chibu Mom, do you say thank you a lot? Do you say thank you a lot? Yeah? Uh, most of the time. Now, kids, when you wake up in the morning, you say thank you for being awake. And then you go to your parents and say thank you for providing food, clothes, and shelter. The three basic things. Because if there's no food, you won't be able to live. If there's no clothes, you'll be naked. <laughs> and if there's no shelter, you'll be sleeping on the streets. And so if you have not been grateful, you are learning something important from reading from Joan. Every single day, at least once in the day, I need you to say thank you to your parents. It doesn't matter whether they upset you. It doesn't matter whether they made you mad. It doesn't matter whatever happens. 
And so next week, we are going to talk about when we have been so ungrateful. <laughs> Oh, 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 CGA. She's playing CGA. CG CG Mesh. CG Mesh. This is motherful. It's Chinese, so it's CJ. So I'm right, it's Chinese. So Jeff, sit up and let's invite Joshi to read. Josh has been reading his book for the past three weeks. Josh, remind us the title of a book and then you read for us. Ink Heart. Okay. Where was I last? Aha. Found it. From beyond the big capital letter, her mother, as she, as she was in the faded photograph under Mo's pillow, so she hadn't run any, any, uh, away after all. Did she like it in that other world? Did she still remember her daughter? Or were Maggie and Joe just a fading picture for her too? Did she long to be back in her own world? just as Dustfinger did? And did Capricorn long to be back in his world as well? Was that what he wanted for Mo to read him back again? What would happen when Capricorn realized that Mo simply couldn't do it? Maggie shrugged. It seems Capricorn has someone else to read out loud to him. Mo went on, as if he had guessed her thoughts. Bastard told me about the man, probably to show me I, I'm not by any means indefinable. Apparently, he's rather useful assistance for Capricorn, Capricorn out of the book already. Oh yes, and why does he want you? Eleanor sat up, rub, rubbing her behind, and groaning. I don't understand any of this. I just hope it's all a bad dream, the kind you wake up from with a stiff neck and a bad taste in your mouth. Maggie doubted whether Eleanor really had any such hope. The damp straw felt too real, and so did the cold, cold wall behind them. She leaned against Mo's shoulder again and closed her eyes. She was very sorry she had scarcely read a line of Inkheart. She knew nothing at all about the story into which her mother had disappeared. All she knew was Mo's other stories about the fabulous exploit that had kept her mother away. Tales of the adventures she was having in distant lands, of fearsome enemies who kept preventing her from coming home, and of a box she was filling for money, putting something, something new and wonderful in at every enchanted place she visit, visited. Mo, she asked, do you think she likes being in that story? It took Mo quite a long 
time to a long time to answer. She'd certainly like the fairies, he said at last, although they're they're dis decipherable little things, and if I know her she'll be putting out bowls of milk for the brownies. Yes, I like she I think she'd like the part that part of it. So so what so what wouldn't she like? Look uh, Maggie looked at him anxious, anxiously. Mel hesitated. The evil in it, he finally said. So, so many bad things happen in that book, and she never found out that it all ends reasonably. Well, after all, I never finished reading her the whole story. That's what she wouldn't like. No, of course not, said Eleanor. But how do we know the story hasn't changed anyway? After you read Capricorn and his friend out, and now we are lumbered with them here. Yes, said Mo, but they are still in the book too. Believe me, I've read it often since they came out, and the story still the story's still about them. Just finger Bastard and Capricorn. Doesn't that mean everything is still the way it was. Capricorn is still there, and we're only up against a shadow of him in this world. He's pretty frightening for a sh shadow, said Eleanor. Yes, you're right, agreed Mo. Perhaps the things have changed there after all. Perhaps there's another much larger story behind the printed one, a story that changes just as our own world does, as the letters on the page tell us only as much as we'd see peering through a keyhole. Perhaps the story in the book is just the lid of a of a pan. It all it always stays the same, and but un, but underneath there's a whole world that goes on developing and changing like our own. Eleanor groaned. groaned. For heaven's sake, more timer, she said. Stop doing. It. Stop it, do. Stop it, do. You're giving me a headache. It made my own head feel like bursting when I tried to make sense of it all, replied Mu gloomily. After that, they said nothing for quite a long time. All three of them absorbed absorbed in their own thoughts. Eleanor was the first to speak again, although it sounded as if she were talking to to herself. Heavens above, she murmured, taking off her shoes. To think of all the times I wished I could slip right into one of my favourite books. But that's the advantage of reading. You can shut the book on every one. Grinning, she wrig she wriggled her toes and began walking up and down. Maggie had to suppress a giggle. Eleanor looked so funny hobbling from the wall to, to the door and back again with her aching feet, back and black back and forth like a clockwork toy. Eleanor, you're dri driving me bonkers. Do sit down again, said Mum. No, I won't, she snapped back. I'll go mad myself if I stay sitting down. Okay, Josh. <laughs> Thank you so much. We are running out of time, even though we are enjoying your story. But we are running out of time, and we would, we would actually continue to know who is running Elenite bonkers. And before you go, <laughs> Josh, do you have any questions for these girls? No. Oh, Josh, why are you always doing this? Oh, I told you last week, you need to ask them a question. Oh, okay. Anyway, that's just you know, for you. So, next week, 
I would actually make Josh ask you a question. If you cannot answer the question, and then we'll go back to the drawing table. Go, go, go. Kate, thank you for watching today. Remember, we talked about sorry, and we started talking about thank you. And lastly, I just want to recap. It's better not to do something than to say sorry. But we cannot do without saying sorry. One big auntie told Jenny, don't bother hurting because sometimes sorry doesn't just make everything go away. So at home, learn to be at peace with your families, with your brothers and sisters. I'm still trying with this too. <laughs> Please help me. Help me out here. Sometimes it's like a jungle. But the thing is, we have to keep going and we keep loving each other. You guys love each other, right? <laughs> they do love each other and so next week we'll see you guys on reading with joan and on saturday next week we'll come back and talk about thankfulness think about a story where you were not thankful and you come and share with us see you next time on reading with joan remember to follow us on our social media our instagram uh twitter youtube and facebook because we love you and we love reading with you bye bye, bye kids